Hey, it's a Sunday night. Pretty hot. Hot out there doing the yard work. Well, let's come with me. We'll look at some things. Maybe you know them, maybe you don't. Now, I heard some stuff about all the satellites wouldn't work, this, that, and the other. Well, it seems to me the reason that they didn't work is right here in front of us. What they had to do is adjust the uh, atomic clocks, I believe, is what this article had read. You can see up there at the, the NPL, they added a leap second on the first to the atomic clocks to ensure that the time remains synchronized with international time. And then it goes on to read, uh, putting the second in is required. The Earth does not rotate at constant speed, whereas atomic clocks several of which are located at the NPL site in Tennington are much better at keeping time. And leap seconds are sometimes required to bring atomic time back into alignment with astronomical time. This procedure ensures that on average the sun remains overhead at noon. Okay. And I captured a little... Whoop, that's the wrong one. We didn't want Google. But I captured a little bit more about it. And you can read on. <clears throat> this article can be found, uh, I believe it's on Science Daily. Uh, you know, historically, passage of the sun, the time was measured. Um, the coordinated universal time, UTC, is the world's official time. Okay. You can keep reading and reading and reading. The decision to introduce the leap year second was taken by the IERR system service, IERS, and experts at NPL and other timing centers to make necessary changes to the atomic time scales on June the 30th. <clears throat> Over the last decade, considerable debate about the detrimental effects of inserting a leap second on computers hear me and other equipment needing precise time one minor effect is that some systems fail to implement a leap second at the correct instant and display inaccurate time but there is no agreement on the seriousness of this and other problems attributed to leap seconds so I the wordy heard some computer systems crashed and whatnot so I am going to say this is why you know things didn't synchronize up right and your satellites had a little problem this that and the other so we've wiped that out I was able to find a little bit of something uh, I couldn't find the actual news broadcast but I'll bump here for a tithe prophet on YouTube. He has published this on the 24th. That's the time frame when, when I started hearing about it, I guess. Tithe prophet. T-I-T-H-E prophet. Go to his site. Watch the video. <clears throat> and what they're saying in here is that none of these uh, are armed and that they are training the drivers. <clears throat> it didn't say what for. It just said that you know they're training the drivers. So you've got some military police training uh, National Guard MP or whatever. They also I think I had a guy say that they didn't mind if people watched and everything or saw anything but they weren't too real forthright on saying where they were at I don't believe if I remember right so you can come here and watch this it's a little a little, a little over two minute uh, video he put up for the news broadcast on it okay and here we go again everybody see this one protesters were protesting it 
Um, Ohio nuclear plant in Japan, reactor number three, returned to operations despite a deep division in the public opinion. And their prime minister, Yoshihiko Noda, ordered the restarts of number three and number four, saying the living standards cannot be maintained without nuke energy. And then we come to the other part of the article, Kansai Electric Power Company, which operates Ohio in central Japan, was, coincidentally, not available for comment Sunday. It said on its website that a nuclear reaction restarted Sunday afternoon at the number three reactor, a key step for it to begin producing electricity. Fukushima Daiichi in northeastern Japan went into meltdowns and exploded, as we know, after the March 11 tsunami destroyed backup generators to keep the reactor cores cool. In the latest problem at the crippled plant, Tokyo Electric Power Company, its operator, said the cooling system for the spent nuclear pool at reactor number four broke down Saturday and a temporary system was set up Sunday. The cooling system had to be restarted within 70 hours or temperatures would have started to rise spewing radiation. What did this say? The Prime Minister ordered the restart of 3 and number 4. <clears throat> okay. Nuclear restarted Sunday at number 3 reactor. Cooling system for number 4 broke down Saturday temporary system set up or spew radiation. So, coastlines, nuclear reactors, and earthquakes are a bad deal. And if it's not on a coastline and it's on a fault line, well, that's just the same. Okay, let's see. Go here. Oh, that's the wrong one. Talk a little bit about Jesus' name. Yeah, that is the one. Now, it gets kind of confusing, but, uh, you know, here in America, we, we have uh, translated things from other nations, other alphabets, languages, and what. So when we call Jesus, Jesus, you can read it, read on here to the Hebrew alphabet. There, there's no letter J or sound. And you go from right to left. In the ancient Latin, Jesus is, well, the spelling's different. In ancient Greek, you see a Y, Y-E-S-H-U-A, H-O-S-H-U-A, and then you see all these different ones, and here we see that in ancient Latin and Greek language, Jesus was spelled with the letter I, for there was no J in either of those languages. In Hebrew, we know there is no J letter. He was originally spelled Yeshua, or Yeshua, or however you want to pronounce that. And here the Messiah's name was spelled in Hebrew two different ways due to the tradition of the Masoretic priests. They did not want to pronounce the sacred part of Yahweh's name, so they changed the Yah to Yeh, which this goes on to discuss later in the article. In, in the ancient Latin and Greek, Jesus was spelled with the letter I, and no J, J, blah, blah, blah. See, it's the same thing there, it's just redundant. The way I tape, or, uh, captured that. Oop. In the, in the new call, they call it so-called, <clears throat> in the New Testament, there were two instances where an angel and uh, the spirit form of Messiah appeared in humans, to humans, and spoke to them in Hebrew. 
And Gabriel was first spoke to Mary. Since Mary was of the Hebrew tribe of Judah, he had to communicate to her in the Hebrew tongue, her native language, not Chinese, Greek. Or she wouldn't be able to say know what he was saying. And fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with Elohim. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. As shown in the Hebrew alphabet, there's no J in Hebrew. So the question is, what did the angel Gabriel say the baby would be named? It was impossible for him to say he would be called Jesus, because Jesus is Greek for Yahshua. In another instance, a Messiah appeared in spirit form, and in a vision, the Apostle Paul to the Paul on the road to Damascus and spoke in, in Hebrew and he described what happened and when we were all fallen to the earth I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue Saul Saul why persecutest thou me Paul asked the spirit who art thou Lord the Messiah replied I am Jesus in the King James Bible and most English Bibles whom thou persecutest one thing is clear, the Messiah knows his name and was stated and repeated throughout the article is possible for him to have said Jesus as it translated into Yeshua spoke to Paul in the Hebrew tongue. And then you go back, you can see some more stuff up in here. But there's no use in fighting and arguing <clears throat> about he's this guy or that guy or he's, he's not Yeshua or he's not Jesus he's this guy it went through the ages of translation and it is in certain areas known what it is to us oh, their alphabet was different and let's see oh, that's a different one we can also look in uh, about about Jewish people. Now, if there's any Jewish people out there uh, watching, I gotta have a drink of Dr. Pepper. I'm hot. If any of you are watching and I've got it wrong, please correct me, because I do like to be accurate, and uh, I like information. I'm like a dry, you know, halfway dry sponge. I just want to soak up every true thing that I can get my hands on so I always wondered about Israelites and Hebrews and Jews and stuff and I've tried to study as much as I can but sometimes it gets really misleading and, and I, uh, sometimes I don't think I got it but let's go through here and this is talking about uh, kind of like is everybody a Jew or something like that if you're a, Jew, a Jewish person and most Christians will find, I'm going to read up through here, that the literal word Jew does not appear in the entire original, original text of the Bible. Neither the Old nor the New Testament. The original Hebrew of the Old Testament uses uh, this word, Yehudim, and Judahite. The original Greek of the New Testament uses, uh, I can't really pronounce that, but it looks like it begins with an I, meaning Judean. These original words were used in the earlier translations of our Bible and only seem to have been replaced by the word Jew in fairly relatively recent times. That doesn't mean 50 years ago <clears throat> in the scope of time. And uh, this is Dr. Young. He's a uh, someone who's written a book, Analytical Concordance of the Bible, and this is what he's got to say about the word Jew. A descendant of Judah, strictly speaking, the name is only appropriate to the subjects of the kingdom of the two tribes after the separation of the ten tribes. And this uh, man, this other man, says he cannot strong, too strongly emphasize that point. The word Jew, even it is presently used in the Bible, was only ever applicable to the southern house of Judah. And in fact, only to a small portion of even that section of the overall people of Israel. The northern house of Israel was never referred to as Jews. In fact, the major portion of the house of Judah was also never referred to as Jews. The word Jew was only ever used in the Bible, and then only by modern translators in regard to the descendants 
the descendants of the portion of the southern house of Judah who returned from the Babylonian captivity under Ezra and Nehemiah. The word could not have been applied to the balance of the house of Judah, nor to the northern house of Israel for the simple reason that they were not there. These people who formed the major part of Israel were in captivity to the northwest of Palestine and included the whole of the northern ten tribes which had been previously taken into captivity together with a major section of the southern two tribes who had subsequently been taken captive into the same region long before the Babylonian captivity. The Apostle James was fully aware of this fact because he addressed his epistle to the twelve tribes scattered abroad. <clears throat> It is absolutely essential for a correct understanding of the Bible that we acknowledge the difference between the Hebrews, the house of Israel, the house of Judah, and the Jews. God never, ever confused these terms in the Bible, and God considered it so necessary to make such careful distinction between them, then there is absolutely no excuse for us not to do likewise. The house of Israel is not synonymous with the house of Judah. What is more important is that the term the house of Israel and the house of Judah are not synonymous with the term Jew. The house of Judah and some of the Jews are of Israel, that is, descended from Jacob. But the distinction which we wish to emphasize is that while some Jews may be Israelites, all Israelites are not Jews. In a similar way, for example, all Scots are British but all British are not Scots. When the general blessings were appointed by Jacob to his twelve sons just prior to his death, the dominion which was to come from the promise of the development into a nation and company of nations were given to Joseph. But the kingship over this dominion or nation, including the great king himself, our Lord Jesus Christ, there's that name of translation again, was to come from and through Judah. Thus the northern house of Israel, which came from Joseph, and the southern house of Judah, which came from Judah, each had their God-appointed tasks and destinies to fulfill. And the prophets displayed meticulous care in their address to the house of Israel, the house of Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the Jews. To apply to one house a prophecy which refers to the other only confuses both the message and its understanding. But in regard to the Jews, it's essential to note that this name is used in the New Testament of those who resided in the portion of Palestine called Idumea. Thus they were in the main the Idumeans. I guess that's how you pronounce that. It is also interesting to note that once did our Lord ever have a good word for these people. On the contrary, he constantly referred to them as his greatest enemies. <clears throat> Thus we have two distinct sections within the people of Christ's day referred to as Jews. There were the Galileans, who were mainly from the tribe of Benjamin, the light-bearing tribe. It was from this section of people from whom came all the disciples except Judas. These were the good figs referred to in the 24th chapter of Jeremiah. Most of the true descendants of Israel of the Babylonian captivity were to be found in this group. But there were also Adameans, comprising the mixed multitude who came back with the others from Babylon. These also mixed with the people of the land who were not Israelites and constituted the bad figs of Jeremiah's prophecy. It was also it was these people who were claiming to be God's people and whom our Lord Jesus Christ accused of being children of their father the devil. <laughs> so, if I've got it wrong, if this article is not correct, anybody who is of the true, you know, anybody that's a lineage of Jewish faith that's really, really knowledgeable about this stuff, let me know. But because I find this totally interesting. And, uh, you know, I, I've always tried to think of the Israelites and the Hebrews and, and just exactly what, what all this stuff was saying and meaning. A lot of people don't pay attention to anything like this at all. So, you know, maybe you're not interested in it, but 
I was, so I wanted to bring it to you. Um, well, this one here is. Well, we need to keep an eye on this <clears throat> because we haven't had, as you know, any cracking, baking, shaking, quaking stuff of really big size in quite some time. So if they start getting six and a half then above, you know, I'll even I'll even start really bearing down at, at, at a six because what it said about number four and the cooling that's already got me worried. They continue to poison. You know, that's that's another thing I want to say. Does anybody ever see anything talked about anymore about everything that they intentionally and they did dumped into the ocean I don't or any of the workers that when that was going on were going in there and trying to work and everything I would be thinking they're not on this earth anymore that they've died you know I'm pretty relatively sure of that but they never do talk about those people and I don't really think that they ever talk about in numbers of exactly a figure of how many people were swept away it's just like it's forgotten nope. so this here I don't think you're going to have to worry about uh, Nibiru Planet X at the moment if they fooled me here and use this as an excuse then they have because I'm in agreement uh, with the, I'm in agreement with this article about the resetting of the atomic clocks and stuff I know that has to be done and they say they did it here and that's a lot, you know along the lines of when you started seeing these videos coming up saying Hey, all the satellites are down. So, I don't think you got to sweat that right now. <clears throat> we were in the set beginning of the seventh month. And we got, you know, we got five months left. That's plenty of time for something else. So keep your chins up, keep your heads up. Beat the heat. Pray to the Lord. Keep yourself safe. Eternally and mortally. You need it both ways. Y'all, I hear from or you'll hear from me pretty soon. Uh, I might not be on too much next week. I'll try, but I've got to work quite a bit of. Uh, over time for the next six weeks <clears throat> it's going to be really hot so I'll probably leave unless it's something just totally you know totally important you know I'll bring it to you but I'll probably do most of my work on the weekend you know I'll be I'll be wanting I'll be hot and tired and wanting to rest and everything when I come home so I'm going to relax for a while now I hope you all enjoy and you'll hear from me soon